Welcome to Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast. Hi, my name is Spuni, and this is Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast, sharing your stories, your projects, and the difference you make. Celebrate the Typo 3 Community on Application, the Typo 3 Podcast. Meet the humans behind the technology. One, two. Welcome to Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast. I'm Jeffrey A. McGuire. You can call me Jam. And this is where we celebrate the Typo 3 Community, sharing your stories, talking about your projects and the difference you make in, around, and with Typo 3 CMS. In this episode of Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast, I had the great pleasure of talking with Thomas Löffler, widely known as Spoonie, Spooner Web, Spooner or Later. I was fascinated to talk with him about his history in Typo 3 and his appreciation for the community. But I think one of the things that makes this particular conversation special is the fact that Spoonie is a solo practitioner who runs a one-person agency himself, and talking with him about how he relates to customers and how he solves problems gave me some real insights that I hadn't had before. So I really hope that you get as much out of listening to this episode as I got out of talking with Thomas today. Thomas Löffler, welcome to Application, the Type of 3 podcast. I'm so glad to be talking with you. And <laughs> why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Who are you and what do you do? I am a guy, a normal guy, a geek with Lego. And uh, I'm living in Stuttgart, uh, born in Vienna in Austria. And uh, living in Stuttgart, doing Type of 3. Um, I like Type of 3 and uh, like the community there. Um, working with Typo3 the whole day, I have my own company, I'm alone, so my office is uh-huh. empty. And yes, I'm doing it for my own since about four years, and um, I never thought hey. that it works like that. So I have enough money to <laughs> to live. Ah, so... That's um, congratulations that you can that you can earn a living. That's a, that's a tremendous yeah. you know being independent is fantastic. Um, Even in the pandemic, yeah. The digital skills in the pandemic have generally been you know pretty much in demand. And for for us, the beginning of the pandemic was tough because all of the budgets disappeared, and everybody thought that was the, the end of the world. And then you know by the end of twenty twenty, they realized that um, as I would say in German, not spending money is also not an option, right? Yeah. I guess it depends on what sort of clients you work with. But what were you doing before you became your own boss and your own team? And and why did you want to go? Why did you want to go independent? I was first um, coming from my um, study. I, I did a type of three during my uh, study uh, with a friend, and we moved to Stuttgart, and I found a job um, in a, a three man company. Um, to build a shop in Type of Three, mm-hmm. so uh, um, yeah, I was there half a year, and during this half a year, um, an agency called Lightwork, I don't know, it's it's not existing anymore, um, um, called me on on Xing, crossing, I don't know the English word for Xing. The, the, oh, Xing, yeah. Xing is the the German the German LinkedIn. The German LinkedIn, yes. And um, they called me and said, uh, we want you um, as a type of 3 developer. And I was not um, very happy with, the, with my first job, building a shop in type of 3. Today, I won't be happy to build a shop in type of 3 as well. So, <laughs> um, uh-huh. And I, mo- and I um, moved to the uh, agency. I was there for three and a half years. And then I moved to a uh, university near Stuttgart, where I developed the Type of 3 um, website. I wanted to move to away from an agency. It was not really nice in the agency. Whenever there is an issue or an error, um, the developer was the reason. And of course. The, 
I'm yeah, glad you course, understand yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to go away um, to a company where there is no um, time hassle for a project and where I want, where I'm able to create an own company next mm. to the job I have. And that was not possible in an agency because the agency chef said, uh, you, you're stealing our projects when you're doing your own company. And I said, oh. uh, I, <laughs> I'm not doing, doing that big projects you have. I'm doing all yeah. small projects. And yeah. So I, I went to the university, was there for about eight years. I finished my job there because um, my chef just said, um, oh, we're doing 10 years of type of we now. Let's move to WordPress. Yes. <sighs> okay. I, looked, I looked like that. <laughs> I asked him how he wa wants to do this. And yeah, it was not very cool for me. And I said to my chef, um, I'm doing type of we, I'm not, not doing WordPress. So here's my paper and I'm gone. Yeah. So this was Have my last that migration. Yeah. It's, it's not done yet. And, um, currently they are moving to, they are removing to type of we again <gasps> because the chef See? is not there anymore. And they, um, did an, uh, they analyzed the, the current situation and they said, um, doing type of three from scratch, a new version, because there is, um, there are on type of three, six, two. So this is yeah. really old stuff and it's, oh. um, it would last about years to, to, uh, upgrade it to the current version. So mm. just start with a new one with a uh, new requirements and mm. yeah. So they, they worked on the migration for four or five years. And then, and then said, oh, well, nope. Yep. And two years wow. after that, after not doing any stuff in the system, uh, two years later, they say, oh, let's do type three again. Are you going to help them with that? Maybe, yes. So nice. I, I'm, I'm quite an expert. I'm still <laughs> an expert in this system. So, um, yeah, I have a, a small agreement with them. So does that feel good? Uh, currently it's not feeling good because I have to work with the old system, <laughs> oh, but, um, okay. yeah, let's see how it, uh, goes for the next years. You, you said something, uh, in there about you weren't going to compete with your old agency because you weren't like as a single freelancer, you're not going to take the size of project that they do anyway. And, and of course, I know from agency experience that, um, you know, below a certain number, every agency can't really justify putting in the work. Do you specialize in smaller things, perhaps? Or, or how's it going to be a one person company? And do you want to like grow that? My intention was to, um, I had a feeling not not to be only developer. So I can speak good to, to the customers. I have some ideas. I can um, build a website together with them. And in the agency, I only was a developer. And mm. I have to do stuff um, that I felt not good about. So doing stuff, um, the, the project manager said, and I said, um, maybe there's another way, an easier way, but no, I have to do this. Mm. And that was also my intention to, to be a freelancer and doing stuff I want to do, doing projects I like to do. So you build, you build a relationship with the customer and you understand their needs and then you also develop the solution for them. Yes. I mm. developed the, the complete solution. So uh, if they, um, the customer often says, I want this in this way, often there are, there are ways to do it easier and maybe yeah. you, with, with more usability for the, for the visitors of the website. Right. So, so some people um, are thinking straight, but um, it's, it's not good for the visitors or it's not, uh, not usable for them. 
So I think that, that that's my I, point of view. Often I see it as a visitor and uh, I can say to the customer, that's not good, that maybe this way is better. Maybe it mm. looks not better, but um, it's u more usable and you want a huh. usable website. I think that there's an anti-pattern um, and I, I, I don't know if it has a name, but um, you know, when someone comes to you and they say, I have this problem and I think it's, X this that's giving me the problem so that I definitely need Y. So t like, and I've researched Y and tell me about Y, but it's like all of that when working with an expert or as a leader, I think working with my team, rather than saying, go do this thing exactly this way, because that's what I say. Yeah. I try to say, I need this outcome. How do we get there and encourage people to to come up with their own ideas. And I think the anti-pattern is not understanding the problem and then coming up with a not solution because you don't understand the problem and then telling someone to do it without telling them why, right? Yeah. And I, client training is important, right? But it's, <laughs> getting them to trust us with the problem and then yeah. coming up with the solutions together. And uh, often uh, when I get projects, uh, type of free projects from another developers and agencies, I see that, um, Often there's one way they know, and they are doing it every time again. It, it doesn't matter which solution or which problem you have, you have one way to do, and often it's not a good way. So you have a, a right. really big extension, really much code, and many code lines, and it's doing stuff you, you never know about. Sometimes it's a black box for me. And I, I need really hours to, to, to get what the extension is doing. And, and that's not the way I want to do. Uh, I want to work as well. I want easy solutions. I want small, tiny things that make, do, uh, make big things. Small code, mm. big, big impression. There's a saying in English, if you have a hammer, every problem looks like a nail, right? Yeah. So somebody has their favorite hammer and... If you want to pound in a nail, it's perfect. But if you've got screws or fabric or a blocked water pipe, a hammer is not going to be your best idea, right? Yeah. So cast your mind back. How did you discover Typo 3? Um, that was a friend of me. He uh, pushed me to Typo 3 because he um, had seen a video of it. I don't know exactly anymore. So he said, um, that's a cool thing. Uh, it was, I think, 2005. We both um, had our own company during the study. We went to, to um, shops and um, supermarkets and selling um, internet connection. You're going to need this crazy new thing. <laughs> yeah. And we not only sold them, uh, we asked them to um, connect it at their homes. Mm -hmm. um, we have technically know-how to, to connect to, to oh, go okay. to them and um, connect the internet to them. And then they said, why do I need this? And you say, well, there are websites. And then someone said, yeah. well, how do I get one of those? And you said, type of three. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it was, um, yeah, there were many, many computers. We had a Windows uh, Millennium Edition and stuff. And it was really hard to, um, to connect them to the internet providers. We know it was hard to um, to integrate the whole um, modem and stuff. So we asked them to not only to, um, to to buy the one and one contract, and uh, we went to them and for a small fine of uh, or a small amount of money, we connect them. Yeah, interesting that yeah. you mentioned Windows ME because you know Jochen Weiland really started contributing by publishing. Uh, instructions on how to install Typo 3 on Windows, right? So Windows got in everybody's way and then made everybody creative, and here we are. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm happy not to use Windows anymore. Well, there even, is that. Even for, for um, fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> so selling internet connections and learning to install them and make them work on yeah. 2005 technology, then was that, was that actually a natural path to um, to then building the websites for people as well? Did it just sort of grow out of that? No, uh, we, we didn't um, build websites for the um, one-on-one customers. 
uh, we were um, really enjoying the internet, the new technology, 2005. Websites uh, uh, were growing and um, domains were uh, not that expensive that everybody can um, afford it. My first domain, I paid about uh, 70 marks, German marks a month uh -huh. for my first uh, domain. Yeah. And uh, I still have it, the domain, <laughs> but it's not, I'm not paying that much as, anymore. Uh -huh. But um, we, are, we were building websites and we um, uh, doing stuff in the, uh, during the study. We learned HTML and uh, CSS a little bit. And uh, my first website was done uh, with uh, frames. The, the really nice. cool stuff. Yes. Frames. Uh, wow. Have a three is still using frames. So. <laughs> Huh. No, there are frames, but yeah. Yeah, a type of three was a really nice tool to make websites, to grow websites and to, um, that the customers can easily change their content without yeah. knowing HTML. That was the, the main, right. uh, thing, uh, yep. 2005. You didn't need the webmaster anymore. Yes. HTML now, is a really crazy language. <laughs> now if, <laughs> I missed the blink tag, but other than that, um, marquee. If, if you know the marquee tag, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, I remember spacer gifts. Okay, that's what layout was. So, like, <laughs> oh boy. Um, if, but if you, um, if somebody came to you now looking to get into technology, to get into websites and so on, um, presuming that you'd suggest typo three to them, how would you go about learning it today? What would um, what would you do? How would, how should they, how would you help them? In the, in the first part, I would uh, look into uh, YouTube videos. There are many YouTube videos for, from the GmbH or from type of three users, uh, which are really good. Um, Jochen, you mentioned him, um, has a really good um, video part on his website. Yeah. How to, to yep. um, do, how to act in the back end and stuff. That's, yeah. that's, that's Wait. another thing. Um, small, small videos. Big effect. Huh, so if you, you want see? to, yeah, yeah, you want to. Um, I'm trying to. You have uh, one one special issue. So you want to uh, upload the file in type of three backend. So you go to the video section, and then you can see. Okay, there is a video how to upload files in type of three backend. So I can only yep. watch this. It's about two or three three minutes, and I know this now. But yeah. um, if you have a video about from one or two hours and uh, chapter 26 is about uh, um, uploading files, you, know, you, you can jump to the chapter as well if it's a good video. It's yeah. easier to help people if you break the things up into smaller pieces, though, yeah. because you can label them and name them and tag them and all that good stuff. I So that's jweiland.net, J-W-E-I-L-A-N-D.net. The yes. videos are good. They are in German. German. So They're only in German. Yeah. The YouTube subtitles, the YouTube translations into English are okay. And um, really, you can still learn a lot. I'm trying to convince them to work on a new series uh, in English because I mm -hmm. think um, Typo 3 can help a lot of people. And if we can make that help yeah. more accessible, I think, I think it's a good idea. So anyway. Um, and, not a criticism another thing is, uh, besides YouTube videos, is um, attending a, a top three event as well. So you, uh, I learned really a lot on top of three events, top of three camps, mm. uh, developer mm. days. Not not that much on conferences, but <laughs> right top of three camps. So, it's uh, really affordable. It's about uh, between ten and forty euros or fifty euros for a whole weekend. You get yep. uh, the whole uh, food, you get drinks, you get really big knowledge about type of three. And I like the, the, the bar camp style. Yeah. I hope that we can start to meet in person again. It's been a difficult couple of years. As much as you can learn from videos. And that's, you know, if you're in a part of the world where you can't come to a live event in any case, of course, this is going to be a great resource. And online conferences and recordings of presentations are great. but I miss the in-person interaction and yeah. I miss 
um, right. the differentiation, just the the high bandwidth communication and connection between people. But yeah. um, drinking a beer together, it's very very valuable, right? That's been yeah. some of my best investments, I have to say. Shifting gears a little bit, so But, tell us about that cool Typo three Apache Solar integration that you built. We wanted to have data in different graphs on the website. And the customer had an old MySQL table where um, they updated the, the data every hours. And we should um, put the data on the website. We didn't want to connect to the MySQL database and uh, do big um, SQL queries with it. So uh, my suggestion was to, to create a solar server, which is indexing the whole table. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get the data from the solar server. When you go on the website, there are many graphs and behind them, there are Ajax requests, but you don't know that there is a, that there is a solar instance behind it. Right, so the solar result is really quick, right? And did you set them up to ping, to, to query the table in a, in a regular cadence, like every hour or something to update themselves? Um, yeah, it's, um, the, the solar server is connected to the MySQL table. So if there was yeah. a change, um, it's re-indexing oh. for itself. Yeah, there's a connector, MySQL connector from Solar. Yeah. You don't use okay. when you're doing a Type 3 Solar as a per default. Right. But Solar has a built-in MySQL connector. So um, you can connect to a MySQL database doing um, the SQL queries you want to have for a document right. in the in uh, XML structure. When there is a data update, um, it uh, automatically re-indexes the documents. It re-indexes, has the new queries ready, updates yeah. the dashboards, yeah. and it's completely transparent to a visitor of the website. There's no click and wait. There's no giant query, query cost, yes. right? In the front. that's fantastic, and, that and nobody knows cool that idea. there is a solar instance behind it because we uh, we uh, we are doing HX requests to Type Three, uh -huh. and uh, Type Three mainly directs them to solar. So nobody that's knows there is cool. a solar instance, and it's pretty fast. We do some right. small stuff on Type Three um, in the in the proxy class, but um, mainly it's from solar. A lot of us, when we have our hammer, right, which is a content management system then we want to solve every problem with that with our hammer with our with our cms um yep. and solve the business logic and the whatever but um there are some problems where you have a special specialized technology like apache solar and knowing how to use it right you can save yes. all of the query cost and all of the load time in the end your content management system is grabbing and presenting the content exactly like yes. it should so it's nothing to be you know embarrassed about that i oh i didn't do it with typo 3 it's like a perfect use case for for an integration and yep. it sounds really awesome thank you that sounds super cool tell us about the typo 3 community what you do a lot in the community and i imagine you get a lot from the community tell, tell us about the typo 3 community yes uh i'm getting more from the typo 3 community that i'm um, putting in i was on my first typo 3 camp 2008 in munich And um, it was my first really touch with the community. Before that, I was on a type of a conference, but conference is like conference and not very socializing. And uh, was my mm -hmm. first appearance in the in the type of free event. And I was wow and stuff. And hey, there's Casper and oh, there's this guy and oh, you are the best. <laughs> <laughs> and I was on a camp. And that there was a session planning at the beginning from the bar camp. And there are many questions and many solutions. And many people uh, wanted to talk, holding a session. And I was really um, enjoying it. And after the first day, I, I thought, hey, you can, you, you are really good in type of free. You're, quite uh, half as good as uh, uh, you're quite quite as good as half of the people here and uh, i wasn't aware of it i, I thought oh. I would, I, i'm a totally noob so um i i knew things that um, some people didn't know i thought they know it but they didn't know and mm. um, that was my okay cool now i'm in the community I'm not a noob, 
um, um, looking from the outside and in, inside the community, I know things and I'm in the community in the middle of it. And that was the first um, first type of recamp. And I was on every type of recamp in Munich since then, except the online camp in the last two years. But on every um, on location event, I was in, uh -huh. in Munich. And And that was my why yearly. And what about the other ones? Uh, why Munich? Munich was yeah. the, the second type of free camp ever. The first one was in Hamburg, but Hamburg was too mm. far for me. Uh, so mm. Munich was uh, is, uh, two and a half hours by car. Yeah, it was uh, my, my first approach to the community. And then every type of free camp in Munich, I visited type of free camps on Mallorca as well. That was really cool with uh, huh. pool, pool sessions and stuff. And, <laughs> um, but I never was on type of weekend handwork yet. So <laughs> Volker <laughs> will be uh, angry, but yeah. <laughs> the thing <laughs> is that, that the conversation that I've had with, with people over time, and I'm, I'm, I'm completely convinced, um, if you have developers working for you or people who want to be involved in the open source technology that you, that your business relies on, It's yeah. not sustainable if you're not investing in that technology. And since you yes. don't have to pay a license fee, you need to figure out what your investment is, what sort of contribution or sponsorship or whatever. But even sending your people to community events, that starts to help the technology. And you need yeah. expertise in the technology to be able to, to plan your business properly. And then it turns out when you send your more junior developers To an event like that, they're going to be able to listen to and hang out with and go to the code sprint or uh, whatever kind of contribution session with the most important people, the most experienced people in that region, in that community, so, and oftentimes the best people in the world. Yeah. And you're getting you're getting a weekend of training and a weekend of motivation and a weekend of really great employee retention by sending your people there you're helping them be better and you're getting you're getting someone better back and it's an incredibly good return on investment i'm convinced that it's the best sort of training possible i mean nowadays they'd get to like they'd get to work with thomas Loeffler, for example if they went to something yeah. like that yeah hearing a session from me yeah no <laughs> and th but th yeah. that there are two parts um first part is the agency who uh, say uh, our our people need to go there and we pay for them they should go to the um, developer days four days in Holland, in Sweden, or Nuremberg. The other part is um, the developer or the, the, the employees should have the, the motivation to go there as well. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I know many developers who do their part, uh, their job from nine to five, and then no type of three, no developing, no thinking about, just doing their job and um, I see that they are not invo uh, evolving. They're um, ah. they're doing o their own stuff. They are the people with the hammer, doing everything with the hammer, and not going to events. Um, and they don't thinking about solutions a... in private. Um, do, doing an extension besides the, the the job. Spending spending half a weekend for um, I I want to do an extension of my own, and um, I have this. Uh, this solution for all problems on the world that's so on the one uh, hand that, they don't that's get the, the difference chance. between the two developers the first one uh, is doing just doing his job and the other one wants to improve himself mm. and uh, getting better and getting really cool solutions these developers are uh, doing the best job and doing the type of three core development for example other stuff we need such people who want to do yeah. this next to the, their nine to five job. Part of what you're describing is some curiosity, right? And a desire yeah. to grow. So I think on the one hand, if you, if you have the curiosity, right? And you go to an event, then you can learn about the screwdriver extension and then you can learn about the stapler extension and you can learn about glue or whatever, right? To use that metaphor. <laughs> But that's interesting. So the other thing that I heard is there are kind of job developers and there are kind of maybe developers at heart. Yeah. I think that maybe the ones at heart are the ones that, can last longer or, or or develop further because they are curious about what's behind and around what they do. 
That's really interesting. I hadn't thought of it in those terms before. What is your favorite thing about the Typo3 community? I found many friends in Typo3 community. We get to know each other. Um, there are some people. I know them uh, as a developer now. They are agency owners. We have a good relationship. Um, I, I found really friends. Um, I want to say um, close, close to family um, status. Talk about a time that the community helped you. They are helping me every time. I'm helping them. Mm. Um, mainly via Slack or Stack Overflow. There are some questions. I help them. But I have questions too. Today I have a question. Um, I, I got a response. I respond very fast and it helped me. So my mm. problem was gone. And I think nice. it, yeah. So, um, so not every developer, not every type of free guy can know everything about type of free. Even um, type of free core, core developers know, doesn't know any, uh, everything about the core. Mm. So um, mm. my experiences are that um, you need to know who to ask, not asking the community, some, who knows that, that you, who knows your solution? So if I have um, oh. an, a problem with PowerMail, for example, an extension, I know the, the extension developer, the main extension developer, and I kind of ask him, he gives me free support. Nice. That's not for everyone. But um, if he has a question, I give, I give him free support as well. So that's nice. uh, a giving and taking. Yeah. Yep. yeah. It's yeah. karma. It's karma. What goes around comes around. Who in the Typo3 community do you turn to for advice or, or a vision or perspective or when you have questions? Yeah, there are, there are many people. Um, Thomas Nova is a special guy uh, who I love to, to um, work with him. Um, mm. He was on the first podcast and he, I, thought, I, I think he uh, said that you should uh, do a podcast with me. I don't know. Yep, and here we yeah. are. <laughs> was it first? Wasn't it the first podcast or the second? He was, he was within the first three because I think the first three were Rochelle yeah. and Thomas and Louisa Fassbender. I think that's. Yeah. I think that's how it went. Yeah, um, j just take a look into your uh, podcast. So you have the people who to follow. Ah. So they're very nice. important people. Jochen Weiland is is a very special guy. I, I like him. I, I, I'm doing a type of three camp um, uh, with him over the years. With type of three camp Stuttgart, we uh, in, implemented, we found, and um, we're doing it over years since uh, until the pandemic. I, I visited his uh, user group. He's doing a, the type of three user group in Stuttgart in his rooms nice. since years. And I was nice. really every month I was there. And oh, uh, so Jochen is a really special guy. Olivier is a special guy. I like him very much. Uh, um, Stefan Busemann and the girls as well. The Luisa you mentioned. Um, Sibylle is really um, impressive. Um, so the, uh, Nicole, Nicole and Helmut, the two. Ah, yes. The, the, Helmut's still uh, on my list too. Yeah. Yeah, Helmut is. Uh, yeah, he's really impressive. And uh, if you if you, if you want to follow anyone uh, in the community, you should. Uh, he he's, should be in the top five. You went <laughs> to the big contribution sprint in India a couple of years ago before the pandemic, right? Yes, it was 2019. How was that? I I have. I have gone to community events for other communities in India and I found the energy incredible. And I found yeah. that the Indian culture, right? And karma is a word from, from Hindi, from Sanskrit about destiny and paying it forward to mm -hmm. get it back and all that stuff. I found that they understood this concept of giving of yourself very well. And I loved, I loved what they were doing there. How was it? How was India for you? How was the event? It was it was uh, really impressive, cool, um, big, many people, really big city. I was um, uh, in we we were in the sprint, um, up, I think six days um, in Bhavnagar. It's a small town in India with about a million 
people. And um, we were in the agency of uh, Nissan, mm -hmm. uh, who were who, who are uh, a big player in top three community as well, and uh, doing having the the first um, extension shop. Uh, we were six days there, and after that we said, uh, okay, we uh, we're saying uh, we adding two days of um, holidays in India. Mm. And the last two days we booked five star in India uh, in Mumbai in the southern part, which is the um, the, the the rich part. And down in the down by the down by the water down there down by the gate. Yes, gate, yes. Gate of and India. We were yeah. we were in the I same hotel program. as the local uh, cricket team. Uh huh. So it's it's quite. Um, uh, if if we uh, went to Munich, for example, and uh, go to a five star hotel and Bayern Munich, the, the football team is there as well, or Barcelona. At the same wow. visit was in Mumbai. Uh -huh. We were in the hotel. It was really cool. Um, we we don't know the people, the, the cricket uh, stars, and yeah, it was uh, it was really funny. And we um, did a, a nice uh, trip to the elephant. Island inside Mumbai. So we um, moved with a uh, with a ship, with a small ship, about an hour, and we were still in the middle of the town. So Mumbai has uh, more more people um, than uh, Baden Württemberg. The whole uh, the whole the local whole state country. You live in. Your whole state I'm living. Yeah. And how many people live in Baden Württemberg? Um, I think it's 10, 10 million. I don't know. Right. Need and to look Mumbai, next next to your the, the recording. <laughs> yeah, and then the last time I looked, Mumbai had an official population of maybe sixteen or eighteen million, which is incredible. But they think it's they think it's more than twenty because it's really hard to count people there as well. <laughs> but um, how was the um, six days of sprint? Is really massive. Yeah. How many? Like, how was that? Um, it was really cool because the people wanted to. Um, they 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 had a need for know how. They wanted to have know how. They wanted to know how do, do I, um, how do we develop websites? How do we um, manage type of three? How do we integrate it? How do we deploy it? How do we um, use our local in, uh, development, for example? Mm. And mm. Um, there were really what what want the knowledge. They were from from begin to the end where everybody was there, was in the sprint. Everybody of the agency, no customer projects, four days completely sprint the whole agency. We we did uh, some teams, and every team was working on another stuff, um, on another issues or epics. And um, two or three people are man uh, did manage the whole thing. And next week we visit. Uh, many restaurants. We, um, I'm not eating everything. Let's say it like that. <laughs> okay. And you're if fussy. It's, yeah. If it's the word, yeah, then it's me. Spooner and fussy. Yeah. Okay. And um, I, th I thought, okay, we are going to a location where there's only vegetarians. And I said, okay, let's see. And it's it's really cool. So if you go to the to the street, you go outside of the office, and there's street. The street is really good, uh, where the where the cars are, can can uh, can drive, but um, the pedestrian was uh, a mix of of garbage, of stones, uh, um, and and some cows <laughs> sitting there as well. So um, you go on the pedestrian, you uh, you cross the street, and you see a house where they say, okay, there's a good restaurant in it. And you see the house from outside, it, it looks like, uh, okay, let's see how uh, uh, what kind of restaurant this is. And you go inside there, and it's li like, you're, like you're stepping into a uh, Europe uh, five-star hotel. Mm. From outside, wow. it, it looks like a one-star hotel, a restaurant, and you go in and um, you see the Michelin stars 
coming wow. to you. Wow. Uh, it looks really it's good. A... The food was really good, really nice. Um, uh, it was um, um, eating with, with the hands mainly. Uh -huh. um, yeah. it, it was it was impressive. <laughs> there were uh, really I... big uh, menus that the agency um, paid all of the stuff. And, I adore uh, it. It tastes, food. It tastes really Indian good. Food. Yeah. Yes. And it and it's oh, especially yes, it also the the the, um, the um, sweet stuff it was really cool. Ah. We were in a, uh, in a restaurant one day or what, uh, to dinner, and we, we we got a big silver plate, and uh, with small silver plates in there. So in every silver plate, they are putting food, different food in there. And in the in the middle of the plate, we got, uh, for example, rice. Mm. And um, they told me how to eat this, how to mix, which which to mix. And um, they said, I have to do, uh, I have to take this sauce, put it on the rice, mix it up, and then eat. And I I tasted the sauce, and it doesn't taste very very good for me. And uh, next to the sauce, um, I had vanilla sauce. So I, I took the vanilla sauce and said, okay, I take this sauce, put it on the rice to do a, a milk rice, something like that. Uh, like I'm eating, rice um, pudding. A, a, yeah, rice pudding. And, <laughs> and, and, they, and they say, oh my God, what are you doing? <laughs> and and uh, yeah, and one, one of the guys uh, did it as well. And said, "Oh, it tastes really good," and I didn't know the rice pudding. Mm. So that's I made um, rice pudding. That's and, the... Yeah, that was really cool. So and... um, it, it the food was new for me, but um, uh -huh. I made something new for them as well with their food. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, that that kind of meal is called a dali. And, dali. Um, okay. Dali with with a hard tea. Dali. Um, the Indians care about. Food and family first, and if you gave them a new food experience that they liked, then maybe you uh, maybe you got to their hearts a little bit. Changing gears, we'll do a round of quick questions. Okay, what one word would you use to describe Typo Three? Flexible. What are your favorite features of Typo Three? The page tree, especially for you, Benny. <laughs> This answer has been dedicated to Benny Mac. What feature would you like to see added to Typo3? Uh, some of my extensions. <laughs> uh -huh. And what feature would you like to see removed from Typo3? Removed? Oh. Uh -huh. Don't know any feature I want to okay. have removed Fair from enough. Typo3. Can you tell us something that you wish people knew about Typo3, but they usually don't? Typo3 has a built-in shop basket. For years, I don't know if it if it's uh, it's in there yet, but um, there was a shop basket built in over ten years ago. I found it out. So you 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 had uh, the possibility to add items, records, and remove uh, records and uh, clear the basket as well. That's wild. I don't um, know if it's in there yet, but you don't know if it's in there still, or if, or it's, if it's been it, taken out since then. Maybe it's taken out in the meantime. Mm. Mm. I don't know mm. exactly. Okay. I, I've, I've only used it once, so. All right. Who else should we get on the podcast? Um, mm. I would suggest to talk to Nitin. He's, um, maybe maybe everybody knows Sanjay Johan from, from India, from the yep. uh, agency Nitsan. But sure. um, these are two brothers. Um, Nitsan is the name The, the first the first part of the name of his brother and of him so Nitin and Sanjay and Nitin is the the CEO of the mm -hmm. agency and Sanjay is the CTO so he's the mm -hmm. technical part of the agency and Nitin is the um, executive the the strategy guy maybe it's a it's, it's a good suggestion because he has nothing to do with development. Um, he he is doing a strategy. He comes from India. He's uh, not located in Europe, so he mm -hmm. um, has another um, state of mind. Great regarding type Sounds of three. Perfect. I met them in Berlin, in fact, mm -hmm. and recorded a video with them for something a few years ago. I would love to. I would love to talk with Nitin. That sounds like a great yeah. idea. 
Oh, well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Um, it's been really, really great to catch up with you. It's been really, really nice. I would love to see you at Typo 3 Camp Munich or at a user group in Stuttgart or something. I'm, yeah. I'm really ready Developer to Developer Days, go. conference. I take yeah. every event next year that uh, that's, uh, is an in-location. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I don't like this, um, these remote um, conferences. I tried it one or two times and then I said, uh, I, I like it uh, to be there. To meet the yeah. people, to to yeah. um, not not looking on the the computer whole weekend, um, to see thirty people, and you don't um, have the possibility to talk to one special guy. You want to um, talk with him. And, yes, um, I like the socializing and the whole stuff around the the, the type of weekend. Yeah, um, I really hope um, we can manage it. Yeah, a friend of me is is uh, not doing type of free anymore. I learned him. Uh, I, I get to know him in on type of free in Munich. He's not doing type of free anymore. He is doing only front end stuff. He's a responsive mm -hmm. guy for me. If I uh, need some responsive stuff or front end stuff, I call him. Um, but he was attending type of free camp Stuttgart every time he he was able to and um, to to have the socializing. He doesn't. He, he doesn't need to know anything new from Type of Three, but he wants to know the people who, who, who wants to to meet the people. Community is really important. Community is really really important. All right. So I hope to see you in person in 2022. Yeah, it's been great to talk with you. Yeah, stay safe. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Thanks, Bruni. Thanks to the Typo3 Association for sponsoring this podcast. Thank you, B13 and Stephanie Kreutzer, for our logo. Merci beaucoup, Patrick Gaumont, Typo3 developer and musician extraordinaire, for our theme music. Thanks again to today's guest. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe in the podcast app of your choice and share application, the Typo3 community podcast, with your friends and colleagues. If you didn't like it, please share it with your enemies. Would you like to play along and suggest a guest for the podcast? Do you have questions or comments? Reach out to us on Twitter at Typo3Podcast. You can find show notes, links, and more information in our posts on Typo3.org. Remember, open source software would not be what it is without you. Thank you all for your contributions. Thomas Löffler. Yeah. How do you handle it every day that you have the world's coolest nickname? Uh, I I waking I'm waking up every every day. My my um, my my alarm is a big hymn for me, and I'm <laughs> setting up my cap, and I'm walking outside of my sleeping room, and everything is cool. So <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. What, uh, I, don't, I don't have the coolest nickname. I think you have the coolest nickname. And when I was becoming active in, in the community and digging back in and everything, how um, everybody talks about Spoonie, Spoonie this and Spoonie that. And then, you know, on Twitter, you were Spooner Web one day and Spooner something else the next day. And um, I just, it's just so delightful and so cute in English to call yourself Spooner when the literal translation of your name is Spooner, right? Lofia yeah. just means... Uh, a person who spoons. It's um, uh, Carl is realizing it now. <laughs> <laughs> Carl gets German lessons and other. It's a whole educational opportunity cutting these podcasts, and um, 